The following is a live presentation of Retro Sports Network, home of the champions of the past, present, and or future. And happy Thursday to you all. My name is Ron Juckett. Welcome to the program for this fourth day of January 2024. In game two of our National League playoff between the San Francisco Giants and the Los Angeles Dodgers. If the Dodgers win this, then they'll win the National League pennant in game number 164, capping off the longest season, literally, in National League history. And they will go with Don Drysdale, who was a 25-game winner in real life. He won this game in real life as well. This was win number 25. San Francisco won game one up in San Francisco at Candlestick Park. The Dodgers won game two down here. And in the winner-take-all game in real life, it was Juan Marichal getting the best of Johnny Padres. And the Giants, just like in 1951, won the pennant. Now... Jack Sanford, a 24-game winner. Don Drysdale, as we said, a 25-game winner. Dodgers win this, at least in our little neck of the woods. They'll win the National League and have, a, have the New York Yankees coming to town. The Yankees are headed for the West Coast either way, whether it's San Francisco or L.A. A little bit of a Brooklyn Dodger feel to this lineup today. Junior Gilliam at second. Duke Snyder. By the way, is a left fielder for L.A. And if you were a big fan of the Dodgers out in the Coliseum, you got Wally Moon today at first base. Giants got Willie McCovey, Willie Mays, and Orlando Cepeda going 3, 4, and 5, not necessarily in that order. So that's what we got for you on a beautiful night in Southern California because, girl, don't they warn you, when it pours, man, it pours, but not tonight. The San Gabriels are in full view as the Dodgers try to lock down a pennant. As Retro Sports Network presents the 1962 National League Playoff from Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles, California, it's the Los Angeles Dodgers and San Francisco Giants. And today's game is brought to you by DigitalDice.com, the best darn podcast on the web for your sports simulation and replay needs. Find us today on Spotify, Spreaker, iTunes, or wherever else fine podcasts are listed. D. Lando, how you doing? Big Dave and Pesky Pole. No school today, buddy? Let's go Giants and Willie Mays. John Drysdale gets the call for the Dodgers. Big D started 41 games. For L.A. in 62, he was their age, 25 years old, fastball at 87, and a fly ball pitcher. He didn't even pitch. He was 32 when he retired. Last day of vacation, work day tomorrow, students back on Monday. Oh, you guys take a lot of time off. The rest of Drysdale's numbers, 314. He went 25 and 9, by the way, with a 284 ERA. Probably should mention that. 314 innings, 272 hits, 21 homers, 78 walks, and 232 strikeouts. The lineup for the Giants in this game, too. Chuck Hiller leads off at second. Jim Davenport at third will bat second. Willie Mays, who had that triple yesterday up in San Francisco, will bat third and play center field. Willie McCovey with the lefty not starting for the Dodgers. He didn't. They didn't want to use him against San, or Sandy Koufax. They will use him against Drysdale. He cleans up in left field. Orlando Cepeda will bat fifth at first base. Felipe Alou in sixth will bat right. Tom Holler behind the plate bat seventh. Jose Bagan behind the or at short will bat eighth. And Jack Sanford on the mound batting ninth. And Drysdale should throw about 135 pitches. Defensively for the Dodgers, Duke Snyder a three and a six in left. Willie Davis an eight and a seven in center. Frank Howard a six and a five in right. Tommy Davis is at third. He's a three. Maury Wills at short a ten. Jim Gilliam a five at second. Wally Moon, where you get the word moonshot from. He's a three at first. Rose Burrow behind the plate a nine and a seven. And Drysdale not a bad fielder. An eight on the mound 
with a 909 fielding percentage. Hiller up in San Francisco, 0 for 3 with a strikeout, a 276 hitter, three homers and 48 RBI on the year. And Hiller sends this one in to center field. Davis is there, one out. Again, 74 in Los Angeles as the sun starts to set behind home plate or towards downtown. Winds right to left at 16. And that's the reason why Dodger Stadium faces the mountains and not downtown because the setting sun goes to the Pacific right over downtown. Although the skyline wasn't as magnificent in L.A. in the early 60s as it is today. Jim Davenport struck out twice and grounded into a double play in game one. 297, 14 homers, and 58 RBI overall. Drysdale deals. There's a line drive to Wills, and there's two out. For Willie Mays, who had a triple for not yesterday. One for four. In this particular game, in real life, he hit two home runs. He hit 304 on the year. 49 homers and 141 RBI, but he was not the National League MVP. Hard to believe that in Willie's tremendous career, he was only an MVP twice in 54 and in 65. In the center field, back goes Davis. Willie is there, and that will retire the side. So one, two, three, go the Giants in the top of the first. We head to the bottom of the first here in L.A. No score. Same was true with Ted Williams. Four, just 46, right? Jack Sanford, oh, by the way, 39 games, 38 starts, 24 and 7, an earned run average of 343. Jack is 33, fastball pitcher at 83, and a fly ball pitcher. Bugs Bunny says hello. In 265 and a third, he allowed 233 hits, 23 homers, 91 walks, and 147 strikeouts. That's true. Pesky Pohl says Mays would have won it about six times if they voted the way they do now using war. You know who I saw come out against war the other day? Bill James. Here's the Dodger lineup for you. Maury Wells leads off at short. Jim Gilliam at second. Well, bat second. Duke Snyder, who played in 80 games primarily as a pinch hitter, will bat third and play left field. Tommy Davis, I didn't realize he was a third baseman, will bat third and bat cleanup and play third. Really, English, I know. Wally Moon at first will bat fifth. Frank Howard, who crushed one yesterday in right, will bat sixth. Johnny Roseboro behind the plate batting seventh. Willie Davis in center goes eighth. And Drysdale will bat ninth. Sanford should throw about 135 pitches. That's right, Jamie. They wrote a song about what is it good for. And as... They would say in Epps, um, everybody loves Raymond. Absolutely nothing. Willie McCovey is a six and a two and left as we set the giant defense for you. Willie Mays a ten and an eight in center. Felipe Alou is six and a seven in right. They're playing for Wills to bunt. He's not going to do it. Davenport a ten at third. Pagan an eight at short. Hiller a five at second. Cepeda is a six at first. Holler, a five and a four behind the plate. And Sanford finishing up his warm-up tosses and eight on the mound with a 948 fielding percentage. Pesky Pull says, I think Bill James doesn't like how people use war. Too many use it to compare people who play different positions. That's not how it should be used. I would agree. I'm not a huge fan of wind shares either. You know, I think, again, you don't want to get stuck in the old fuddy-duddy ways and all that, and I understand that RBIs are more of a component of what's going on in front of you as opposed to, to what your actual production is, but nobody goes to a ball game or watches one on television to see a win share or a win above replacement. Maury Wills went 0 for 4 in game 1. Davenport has it, throws to Cepeda for the ad as Maury grounded out. He went 1 for 5 in game 1 with a single. 
Jim Gillian went 0 for 4, 274 homers and 43 RBI on the real year. Right back to Sanford, Jack throws it over to Cepeda for the out, two away. For Duke Snyder, 278, five homers and 158 at bats and 30 RBI. Snyder, the Duke of Flatbush, would go on to play for not only the hated San Francisco Giants, but in 1963, the last year of the Polo Grounds, to the New York Mets. And if you look that up, you can find a couple of those home runs that were recorded on videotape. Pitch to Snyder. Duke hits a slow ground ball to Pagan. Jose has it, throws to Cepeda. Snyder running, and he is out on a bang-banger. So the Dodgers go in order. No runs, no hits, no errors. We go to the second. No score. Yeah, and I, and I get if you're comparing people against each other on different teams, it's a good way to do that. War, pesky poll says, is just one war tool to look at. It's not perfect. It isn't designed to be perfect. It's just one more way to compare guys. My favorite Saber stats or extra stats, if you will, I, I think a better judge, again, just my opinion, OPS plus and ERA plus, because that goes against the league average. Pesky Paul wrote that as soon as I was saying it. Average adjusted for ballpark, and I think that gives you a good idea, 100 being average. So if you were yep, an OPS plus of 135, you were better than you know, 35% more productive than league average. I, I think that's a great tool to use. Willie McCovey pinch hit and struck out in game one, 293, 20 homers and 54 RBI. And again, although he did pinch hit against Koufax yesterday, in real life, Alvin Dart did not want to use him against Sandy. McCovey hits a ground ball to Gilliam to start the second, over to first, one out. Jamie says, I think sometimes the era and the way the game is played influences how different stats are or were valued. And as Pesky Pole typed it before I could say it, that's all very true. Wade Boggs, I think, fits into that description. He was much too concerned about his on-base percentage and not necessarily about driving in runs. And today, you'd want that. But in the late 80s, you wanted him to be able to hit to all fields. He also was not the fastest leadoff hitter in Red Sox history. That'd be like having me as a leadoff hitter. Cepeda, by the way, two for four in game one, a solo homer. A run scored in the strikeout. 306 for Orlando, 35 homers and 114 RBI. Box is a lot better. Yeah, exactly. I mean, today you look at Wade Boggs, and that would be a prototypical. 21st century leadoff hitter. Draw the walk. Pitch to Cepeda. Line drive to center. Davis is there. Willie is going to dive and can't get it. Now, did it skip past Willie? No. Cepeda will hold on the single. So the first hit of the ball game belongs to San Francisco. Felipe Alou won for four, but that one hit was a home run. He drove in two. That came in the ninth off of Koufax. He also struck out. Cepeda, a threat to steal. Trisdale throws to first, and Orlando is back. Jamie says in the 80s, because generally speaking, on-base percentage was not a valued stat. The score runs required more putting the ball into play. Kind of a catch-22 thing. Well, yeah, I mean, you look at how the Cardinals were so successful in the 80s. I mean, they won three National League pennants. Good pitching, good defense, the carpet, and speed. I mean, ironically enough, as we get into starting 1988 Monday with the Twins and the Yankees, noon Eastern, 9 Pacific, on Retro Sports Network, the Yankees tried to copy that. They got Willie, uh, they got Ricky Henderson and his speed. They just never had the pitching. But yeah, drag bunts and that. 
Can you imagine E.T. Rowe on that Cardinals team? They really needed a right fielder. Nothing against Andy Van Slyke and Tito Landrum. Pitch to Alou. There goes Cepeda. The throw down to Gilliam, and Orlando has it stolen for his first. He stole 10 on the year. So runner in scoring position, one out, and a 2-1 count. Drysdale's pitch in the left center. Willie Davis moving over. That'll stay in play. The wind is blowing hard right to left. He makes the catch. He throws it to Tommy. No relation. And Cepeda will hold two out. Tom Holler did not play in game one. Again, lefty versus Koufax. At 261 and 62, 18 homers and 55 RBI. Pesky Pohl says, I still think the 80s were the was the perfect brand for baseball. You had teams who used speed. You had teams that waited for the three-run homer. Great balance of offense and pitching. Games weren't too long or short. I would agree with that. Then again, that was my teenage years. <laughs> and so, oh, that's new. You can reply to people in the chat. I'm excited for 88, too. So, I suppose, you know, you ask someone who grew up in the 60s, and they would think that that was the perfect ball. But the 80s were an extremely stable decade. There wasn't any franchise moves. And I believe only two stadiums opened. The Metrodome in 82 and Sky Dome in 89. Yeah, it, 50, you know, the mid-50s were pretty good. It wasn't really a national game. Holler. It's a fly ball to right field. Howard in the corner. Frank puts up the paw and makes the catch, and that will retire the side. No runs, a hit, no errors. After an inning and a half in game two, no score. I'm already thinking ahead to what to do for, for 25, and that would be a non-wheelhouse 77-93 to 93 year. Davis won for four in game one. A solo homer and a run scored. I have that book. I need to read it. Pesky says, I'm reading the great book on the 54 season as you do his 54 replay. Struck him out. So Sanford got him on an 0-2 curve. One out for Wally Moon. Moon, 242 in 62. The unibrow, probably not real happy. He left the friendly confines of the L.A. Coliseum. Four homers and 31 RBI. Sanford deals, and there's a fly ball to right. Alou going way back there, and that's gone. So how about that? A moon shot from Wally Moon, and the Dodgers lead game two, one nothing. We just uncorked that one into the bullpen in right center. To the moon, Alice. This isn't quite the era of Dodger baseball where you give Koufax and Drysdale a run and say, make it work. But they are that good. We all got moon. And I even kept my pants on. Anyway, back to that 54 book which I have. He's Pesky Pole is reading it as he plays. He's at the All-Star break and two weeks away from that in his replay. Nice. So here's Hondo. Went three for four in game one. A solo homer up in San Francisco and a run scored. Sanford deals. Howard strikes out. He chased a one-two fastball, two out. Johnny Roseboro went one for four in game one, 249, seven homers and 55 RBI in real life. Roseboro singled and struck out. No Scotty today. Roseboro hits a ground ball to Cepeda. Orlando will underhand it to Sanford. And Johnny is retired. And after two... A run, a solo homer by Wally Moon. The lone hit, and after two, one, nothing L.A. So Drysdale to face Pagan, Sanford, and Hiller. 
here in the third. Jose, one for three in game one. 259, seven homers, and 57 RBI in real life. Jamie says, reading a book along with playing a replay or after you read a book on the topic makes the replay a lot more enjoyable. I wish I had read The Summer of 49, although that replay was quite enjoyable. It wasn't what I expected, but it didn't make it any less enjoyable. Pitch to Pagan. Jose, a hard ground ball to Wills. Maury throws to first for the out, one away. So here's Sanford, 153 and 62, 15 for 98, three doubles and four RBI. Now the wind is coming from the mountains towards the ocean at 21, blowing in from right. Ground ball to Drysdale, big D, third base side of the rubber, throws to first. To a, I got, and I can't see the name of it here. 64, you know, I'm toying with the idea of doing 64. Chuck Keller, by the way, 0 for 1. Drysdale, 32 pitches, 2 and 2 thirds, and a hit. Jamie says, it's a good book. I know you're not a big fan of 60s baseball. You know, I actually bought 64 and 67 for Strat. But his book on 64 is really good, too. He's a great author. Pesky Pohl says, my dad's had 54 because of the two 18 leagues. He now had several black players playing the game in more talent and not watered down. Yep. Hiller is 0 for 1. Drysdale winds and fires, and Hiller ropes that one in the right for the single. So second hit for the Giants, Davenport is 0 for 1. In the left center, in comes Davis. Willie is there, makes the catch, and that will retire the side. No runs, a hit, and no errors. We go to the bottom of the third here in game two. Dodgers one, Giants nothing. Sixty-four, of course, remembered mostly for the Phillies collapse and the Cardinals winning the World Series. Both leagues had races that came down to the last weekend. The Orioles and the White Sox gave the Yankees all they could handle. Willie Davis, by the way, 0 for 4 in game 1, 285, 21 homers, and 85 RBI. I think you'd enjoy 49, especially in replay, because that's your primary game, right? Mr. Pohl. And read that book. You read the 41 book as I did the 41 replay. It was great. Do your kids get into that? I mean, your kids are quite athletic. Pitch to Davis. Willie really laces that one to Chuck Hiller. One out. For Drysdale. 198. No homers and 14 RBIs. Now, summer of 49. I should see if I can find that on auto. Ground ball to Pagan. Jose has a great stab at it. Throws to get the speedy Drysdale. Two out. So Pagan gets a begrudging ovation from the Dodger fans. Opening nine for Sanford. 28 pitches. Two and two-thirds a homer. That was to Wally Moon. The lone hit and two strikeouts. Maury Wills is 0 for 1. Got him, and that's three for Sanford, and that'll do it. No runs, no hits, no errors. We go to the fourth in game two, one nothing Dodgers. So Mays, McCovey, and Cepeda. Willie's over. When I ask about Pesky's kids, they are both basketball nuts. And one of them, I'm not going to say which one, just in case they're in the room, I, I think is really talented. Not really. Your son plays baseball, but he plays MLB The Show. He knows all the current players because of that game and their ratings. The cool thing is the old-time player is on that, and he asked me about Oh, nice. Okay. 
He's a baseball nut. Okay. I just wondered because um, if you because I don't know you play replay basketball. Someone must make a WNBA set of some sort. Start them while they're young. Ground ball to third. Davis has it over to Moon. And Willie is out. And speaking of Willie, here's McCovey, who's 0 for 1. The Dodgers have one hit, but Wally Moon made that count. It was a home run. McCovey in the shallow right, going to drop in front of Howard, and Willie is on. So here's Cepeda, oldest son basketball, next son. Oh, you have more. Ah, now that's why I didn't want to say that out loud. Oldest son is basketball, next son lacrosse, then baseball, and then she plays basketball. There's lacrosse blasts from play. But, yeah, you know, Jamie says that, you know, that's how I remember learning and getting an interest in the baseball pass as a kid, asking my dad about players from his era. I had an uncle who grew up a Cardinal fan, lived in Connecticut. In fact, I told you this, told the story several times about the first game I ever went to. He took me to. And, yeah, he would talk about that. And, and that, that's how it gets passed along. Cepeda gets hit. So Drysdale now in a jam. Got him on the ribs. So McCovey and Cepeda are on. They both have average speed. Willie on second, Orlando on first. Alou is 0 for 1. There's one out here, by the way, in the top of the fourth. Drysdale takes a moment. And then from the stretch, ground ball to third. Tommy Davis only is going to have a shot at Felipe. And they got him. So he goes a long way to get Alou. Two out for Tom Holler, who is 0 for 1. Runners on second and third, two out. Dodgers lead 1-0. And they lead this best of three, 1-0. And he walked Holler. That might be the first base open walk for Pagan, who was 0 for 1 and 1 for 4 on the series. Mr. Gardner's here just for the commercials. Two oldest play their sports but not obsessed with it. Two youngest are obsessed with their sports and very competitive. They're more like him in that respect. Your wife struggles to understand the angst they feel when it comes to it. The two oldest just have fun with it. Kevin Euclid, who now does Red Sox television, has said before he became an analyst that he loved playing baseball. But watching baseball was not his cup of tea. Pitch to Pagan. And he walks home the tying run. So McCovey will score. And it's 1-1. So Drysdale, who struck out 232 in the, on the 62 season, has walked to and hasn't struck out anybody. So this one's tied up. Sanford 0 for 1. Holler on second. Pagan on first. Alou on third. Or Cepeda on third. Struck him out, and that'll do it. 2-2 uh, two -two curve ball. Got him looking. However, the Giants tie the ball game. One run, one hit, and no errors. They've left on five through four, and after three and a half, 1-1. One, one. So 5-3, the Dodgers won the opener. This one is tied at one, and if the Giants win this game, this playoff will be tied at one. Gilliam, Snyder, and Davis to face Sanford here in the fourth. Jim is 0 for 1. Chopper down to Cepeda, gobbles it up, takes it to the bag for the out. His youngest, Pesky Pole's youngest son, loves the Braves and Acuna. Has a jersey, too, I think, right? I think he wishes he was from the Dominican instead of a white kid from the suburbs. <laughs> hey, dream big, right? Here's Duke Snyder. He's 0 for 1. 
draws the walk, and so the go-ahead run is on for Tommy Davis, who struck out his first time up. Snyder, a threat to steal? Really? And Tommy Davis is a good hit and runner. Sanford goes to the plate. Fly ball, left field. Back goes McCovey, but it's going to have room. Makes the catch, and Snyder goes back to first. So two out for Wally Moon. Wally Homer his first time up. Now I'm tempted to steal, but I want to see what Sanford does. Goes to the plate. Moon pops it up. I should have stole. Pagan. In the lights, makes the catch, and we played four. Nothing across for the Dodgers. They leave one on, and after four, one one. So Hiller, Davenport, and Mays here in the fifth. Opening 18 for Drysdale, 70 pitches, four innings, three hits, two walks, and a strikeout. And the run is earned. Hiller, one for two. He's got himself a single. Right back to Drysdale. Throws it to Moon. One out. Davenport is 0 for 2. And 0 for 5 on the series. Maybe it was in 2023, Jamie says. But it seems in Action PC 24, they made the animation sometimes harder to judge whether it will be a homer or fly ball. I know that shots down the line look like they're going to hook foul. I've been caught on that a couple times. And, of course... I don't think we have done, I think Tiger Stadium is the only one we've done more than one game out of. Obviously, that will change starting next week as we add some more parks in. But, yeah. You know, the other new thing I noticed, Jamie, as far as gameplay is that the third baseman will t run to the third and take the out there. So, w Maury Wells... For the out, two away. Here's Mays. Willie is 0 for 2. And 1 for 6 on the series. Drysdale's pitch. Ground ball to Will. Second verse. Same as the first. And the Giants go in order here in the fifth. Halfway home in game two on a cold and almost snowy day in snowless, Bur snowless Burlington. 1-1. Join us late. Here's how we got here. Wally Moon hit a moon shot in the second in the bullpen in right center field to make a one nothing Dodgers. But in the fourth, the Giants sent seven to the plate, including a bases loader walk by Jose Pagan to drive home Willie McCovey to tie this puppy up at one. And so Jack Sanford and Don Drysdale, the pitchers, Big D, a three hitter through five, and Sanford just the home run to Moon. He has struck out three. Jamie said that he got had that with a third baseman in the game. But some, what used to look, look like long fly balls, really, I can read, sometimes carry over the fence. I got caught with an error. I believe that was in the, um, the Reds-Tigers series. I thought it was going to be just a routine play. And when I looked back up, I saw that the card had popped up. So Frank Howard struck out his first time up. Bottom of the fifth in a 1-1 game at Dodger Stadium. Ground ball to third. Davenport over to Cepeda. And Howard is going to reach on the air as Davenport threw it away. Howard was motoring down the line. And that's a one-base error. The throw was low. Cepeda blocked it. But he wasn't on the bag when he had it in the glove. 
So here's Roseboro. Johnny's 0 for 1. In the right center, left center, Mays has it for the out. One away for Davis. Willie's 0 for 1. Dodger Stadium, by the way, opened in 1962. We've talked about that it is the only stadium on a major league level that has a gas station as part of it. But the grass, when they opened the ballpark in April, had not matured yet. It wasn't lush and green. And because color television, which wouldn't have mattered in Southern California anyway, um, wasn't really developed, the Dodgers used black vegetable dye to paint the field to give the newspaper pictures the look of a lush green field. It was all Hollywood. Willie Davis is 0 for 1. Howard on first. And Sanford got him on a full count fastball. Got him looking. For Drysdale, who's 0 for 1. Two out here in the fifth. And Drysdale draws the walk. So first and second, two out for Maury Wills. Who can bunt? Would you do it? Sanford opening 18, 71 pitches, four and two thirds. The one hit, the solo homer by Wally Moon in the second. He has walked two and struck out four. The Dodgers have only left one runner on. And as I'm looking at the outcome box, we're going to try it. Can Maury steal first base? Sanford deals. Maury squares, and that's going to roll foul. So the best pay, played, laid plans of mice and men go for naught, and the count is no balls and two strikes to Wills. Sanford, a little more confident now, deals, and that's ripped into center field for a base hit. Howard has average speed. Mays has a good arm. And he's being waved around third. Hondo is going to score without a throw. And the Dodgers take a 2-1 to lead. And that will bring up Junior Gilliam, who's 0 for 2. So Big D on second. Maury Wills on first. Believe it or not. Because this game was a decider. Now the Dodgers had lost five straight coming in. They would win this in real life. This game had a paid attendance of 25,000. Pitch to Gilliam. In the right center field. Mays coming in and will make the catch. But the Dodgers get a big run on the hit and the air. We go to the sixth. In game two, Dodgers two, Giants one. So McCubby, Cepeda, and Alou to face Drysdale. Willie's one for two. Ground ball to Maury Wills. Had to wait for that hop over to Moon for the out. One away for Cepeda, who singled. And was hit by a pitch. Ropes this one into shallow left. Snyder will grab it on a hop. You assume it was a day game. Um, game three was 42,000. was also on national television. I don't know if it was blacked out in L.A. But about half a house for a playoff game. Alou, 0 for 2. Cepeda on first. One out in the sixth. The Dodgers lead 2 to 1. To first, Moon only has a play himself, and he'll take it to the bag. Cepeda moves to second. Game three, by the way, I think they were 5 o'clock starts, so 2 o'clock starts. So, yeah, I think the assumption is correct. Do 42,000. Tom Holler is 0 for 1 with a walk. And they were going to be a best of three series anyway. That's how the National League did it. 
Uh, J Boogie, 63098. Sounds like I've called someone's Kino number. Is our latest follow. -up. Thank you very much. Pitch to Holler, 0 for 1 with a walk, and Tom draws another walk. So Drysdale hasn't been all that sharp. Three walks and four hits and five and two thirds. Pagan is 0 for 1. There are two outs. An RBI, he, and Drew Bases loaded walk, as a matter of fact. So Cepeda on second, Holler on first. Pagan hits a slow ground ball to Moon. Wally plays it himself, and that will retire the side. No runs, a hit, no errors. We go to the bottom of the sixth here in game two, two to one, Dodgers. So Snyder, Davis, and Moon to face Sanford here in the sixth. Duke 0 for 1 with a walk. Ground ball to third. Davenport has it. Throws to first. Snyder is out on a bang banger. So a good throw from Davenport to get him. One away for Tommy Davis, who is 0 for 2 with the strikeout. Fly ball left field. McCovey now stay in the yard in the corner. Two out. You know Lorenzo would have been there. Here's Wally Moon. He homered in the second to make a 1-0 Dodgers. And that was it. Slow chopper. Pagan on the grass. Over to Cepeda. And Wally is retired. No runs, no hits, and no errors. We go to the seventh in game two. Dodgers two, Giants one. So let's see what the... Giants do with Sanford here to start the seventh. Hiller and Davenport do up. Jack has struck out. He's 0 for 2. Stays in the game. Struck him out. So both of Drysdale's strikeouts have been the pitcher. A fastball inside. Not sure what Sanford was looking for, but that wasn't it. Here's Hiller. He's one for three. Chuck has singled. Roped into center field, and Hiller has a hit. So 28 batters deep for Drysdale. 106 pitches, six and a third, five hits. One run. It was earned. Three walks and two strikeouts. Davenport is 0 for three. You know the Red Sox are looking for a fill-in play-by-play announcer. Roseboro and Drysdale get together. There goes Hiller. It was a hit and run. Davis coming in, rides the swing, makes the catch. For the out. Blown in hard off the mountains now at 25 from right field. Willie Mays is 0 for 3. I don't live anywhere near Boston. I make way too many mistakes. But thank you. I know of someone who has applied. Will DeMaze is 0 for 3. Struck him out. And Drysdale is through 7. Stretch time 2-1. Dodgers. There's a couple people that I know that have applied before for that job. They're a bit older now, then again, so aren't we all. But I, I think would have been great doing it. But again, I, I am four hours away from Boston. I don't think she wants to move. Not, not there. Frank Howard, by the way, 0 for 2. A strikeout and a run scored. 
Sanford will start the seventh. Pitch count-wise, he's pretty good. He's only allowed two hits, as a matter of fact, but on the wrong end of a 2-1 ball game. Got him. That's five for Jack. An 0-2 fastball got him looking, and I'll bring up Roseboro. Johnny is 0 for 2. One run, five hits, an error for the Giants, and they've had their chances. They've left on eight. The Dodgers, two runs, two hits, no errors, and they have left on three. Ground ball to first, Cepeda to the bag for the out, two away. Willie Davis is 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Joe Castiglione, of course, is headed for the Hall of Fame. He is the 2024 Ford Frick Award winner. And is at the end of his career. Will Fleming should be the primary announcer, and he is fantastic. And if you think the last name Fleming sounds familiar, his brother Dave works for the San Francisco Giants and ESPN. Davis is 0 for 2. Willie has struck out. Two out, bottom of the seventh, 2 to 1 LA. Davis, opposite way in the left. McCovey will make the catch, and that'll do. No runs, no hits, no errors. We go to the eighth. I wonder if the fatigue warning isn't up anymore. Because Drysdale's close. After seven, two to one, L.A. So McCovey, Cepeda, and Alou. The Dodgers six outs away from hosting the Yankees in the World Series. McCovey one for three, a single and a run scored. Fly ball right center. Back goes Howard, and Frank will make the catch one out. Orlando Cepeda is two for two. He has singled twice. Really, do you think we're sitting there in the fifth inning of a Yankee game and I break into song? They're going to wonder if um, what John Sterling and Susan Waldman slipped into one of my drinks. Popped up. Left side. Tommy Davis will make the catch two away. Felipe Alou is 0 for 3. Drysdale, two out here in the eighth. He would lead off the bottom of the inning. And now I got a decision to make. Do I leave Drysdale in or do I pinch it? Chopper down to second. Gilliam towards first. Throws to Moon. And that's an error. He did the underhanded shovel and scooped it over Wally Moon. And somehow Keith Olbermann's bomb got plunked by it. So now a two out. The tying run is on second for Tom Holler. Who has walked twice. He's 0 for 1. And Drysdale says, what are you thinking? They have some options. I don't think they want to use anybody. If they don't need to. Although Holler is going to be his last batter either way. Drysdale gets the sign. And it's a little ground ball to Maury Wills. He'll throw to Moon. Holler is running. And Tom is. He beat it out. He beat it out. And now runners on the corners. Two out. And would you believe it? Manny Moda is going to pinch run for the Giants. So runners on first and third. Alston looks to Drysdale. What do you want to do there, Big D? So what do you think? You can see the outcome box. 243 and 306 on base. Do you let Drysdale pitch to begin with two out? Or you're bringing somebody in to face one batter. It is righty, righty, lefty. So it would be either Ed Roebuck. Who always got the wrong end of the stick with his partnership with Sears. 
or Larry Sherry, who was the big hero in 59 when the Dodgers won the World Series. You could go with Stan Williams as well, although probably not. The bench says stick with Don. And remember, it's Johnny Padres tomorrow if the Dodgers lose. I like my chances with Pagan. I'm going to stay with Drysdale. A tiring Drysdale. The wind, by the way, is now shifted. It's gone now toward, from the Pacific to the mountains. Jerry Dunphy would like that. 25 mile an hour wind. Now below and out to right center. Pagan has no power to speak of. A single ties the ball game. Moda, good running speed on first, but not stealing speed. Alou on third. Laces this one to right, and the game is tied. Hondo has trouble picking it up. Moda's headed for third, and he's in there. And so now they'll wait to see what you do with Jack Sanford in a 2-2 ballgame. Do they keep Sanford in? If you're leaving Jack in there, you're staying with Drysdale. Jack has struck out twice. He's 0 for 3. He stays in the game. He ropes this one into right in the corner. And Hondo makes the catch. But the Giants take advantage of the error. They get a run on two hits, and they have left on 10. They go to the bottom of the eighth in game two and a 2-2 two -two tie. Yep. An error and an infield single set it up. A little dink and a dunk. Drysdale's day is done. You got Ron Fairley to pinch hit. He did not pinch hit in game one. 278, 14 homers, and 71 RBI. Lefty, righty, righty, Hiller, Mays, and Hiller, Hiller, Davenport, and Mays with McCovey due fourth in the ninth for the Giants. Ground ball, base hit, pass a painter. So the go-ahead run is on. Nobody out. Fairly a decent runner. Or a fairly decent runner. Jack Sanford, 27 batters, 100 pitches, 7 innings plus, 3 hits, the home run to Moon, 2 walks and 5 strikeouts. That was only the third Dodger hit of the ballgame. Maury won for 3. He tried to bunt his way on and couldn't. Drove in a run in the fifth and struck out. And Sanford right at 100 pitches. And Wills draws the walk. So Sanford rubs up the baseball. First and second, nobody out for Junior Gilliam. Who's going to square with nobody out. He's 0 for 3. He puts the bat around. The ball is down. Sanford. Gilliam ran into the bunt. And nobody could advance. Really? So Gilliam bunted it off himself. And he's called out. And nobody advances. I've never seen that before. The ridge of the text. First and second occupied. Sanford throws. Gilliam squares to Bunt. Bunt headed towards the mound. And Gilliam ran into his own ball. And so if you get hit by the batted ball, you're out. Nobody advances. So there's one out. In one of the strangest plays you'll ever see. He bunted it at himself. So here's Snyder. Duke is 0 for 2 with a walk. 
Sanford deals. That's a ground ball to Jack. They're going to try for two. They get Maury on first and Snyder at first. So a 4-6-3 double play following the failed bunt. And we go to the ninth. It's the Giants to the Dodgers to. I've never heard of that. So we'll go with Paranoski. Oh. How are you doing, Tribe fan? Just getting the notification now. I've never seen that before. So, with runners on first and second, we bunted Junior Gilliam. It was an eight or nine bunter to try to move the runners for second and third for Duke Snyder. But Gilliam hit himself with a bunt. Paranoski, six and six. 20 saves, a 2.86 ERA, 70 games. He's 26, fastball 87, and a ground ball, plus plus pitcher. 107 innings, all in relief. 103 hits. All home run, he walked 36 and struck out 68. So Hiller, Davenport, and Mays, and should anyone reach, McCovey. Chuck is two for four. He is single twice. To short, Mari Wills over to Moon, and Hiller is out on a bang banger. My word, that was close. So here's Jim Davenport. Jim is 0 for four. Paranoski from the wine struck him out. A one, two inside on the black, two out. For Willie Mays, who's 0 for 4 with the strikeout. Tommy Davis, Wally Moon, and Frank Howard for the Dodgers in the ninth. In a 2 2 tie, Mays is 0 for 4. He has struck out once. Rips this one to left, and that's a two out single. So the go ahead run is on for McCovey, who has singled scored 1 for 4. Cepeda on deck. Eighth hit for the Giants. They've left on 10. Mays back on the pickoff. So Paranoski and McCovey in a 2 2 tie. Giants win this. It's Padres and Marichal for the pennant. And all that for Harvey Keene. So, I'm surprised the outcome box was in McCovey's favor, but Keene is in more of the Giants' favor. One for four in game one. He singled, scored, and struck out twice. 304, 10 homers, and 68 RBI in the real year. So, once again, two out, Mays on first. Keene at the plate. Paranoski deals. Slow chopper to Wills over to first, and the Giants are done in the ninth. No runs, a hit, no errors. They have left on 11. 2-2 two, two the score. So Tommy Davis, who drove in 153, will lead off to face Sanford. Wally Moon and Frank Howard to follow. Tommy today is 0 for 3 with a strikeout. His one hit in the series was a home run yesterday up in San Francisco. Pitch to Davis. Fouls it back in the count as a ball and two strikes. So 25,000 in attendance. Just kind of stunned. The Giants tied us in the eighth. In the right center, back goes Mays, and Willie will track that one down, one away. So here's Wally Moon. Wally has homered in this game. He homered in the second. Hit four on the year. Sanford looking strong here in the ninth. He's only allowed three hits. 
to right, Alou, two out. So here's Hondo. Frank homered yesterday. Three for seven on the series. Today, at home, he is 0 for three with a run scored and two strikeouts. Claude Osteen watches with interest. Pitch from Sanford. And Hondo rips one into left field for extra bases. So Harvey Keene should have had it. He's a five and a two out there. Hondo is on with a two-out double. And the Dodgers have the winning run in scoring position for Johnny Roseboro. And so we look down at the bench. And I see Lee Walls. So the Dodgers are going to gamble. Walls won for three yesterday. Camille will come in to catch. A walk in two strikeouts. Howard on second. I think we're going to stick with him there. Doug Camilli will catch. If the game is not over. Well, Walls will try to end this right here. Willie Davis is on deck. Howard on second. Two out. Bottom of the ninth and a 2-2 tie. The Dodgers trying to win the pennant. Walls up the middle. That's going to drop in front of Mays. Howard will round third. Mays has to throw home. And the plate, the plate is not in time. The Dodgers win the pennant. The Dodgers win the pennant on a pinch hit single from Lee Walls that scores Frank Howard. And it's the Dodgers who will be hosting the Yankees in the 1962 World Series, they walk it off. They only had five hits. Hondo's mad dash wins the pennant. And in two and a half hours, the Dodgers will win their first pennant of the 60s. They will do it in 63. They will do it in 65. And they'll do it in 66. Three runs, five hits, and an error. And they only left on four. Poor Jack Sanford. He was in there to the bitter end. Two runs, eight hits, and error for San Francisco. And they left on 11. So Drysdale, eight innings, seven hits, two runs, an earned run. He walked three and struck out three. Paranoski gets the win despite the hit. And Sanford, again, eight and two-thirds, five hits, three runs, two earned. The homer to Wally Moon, he walked three and struck out five. And your digital dice player of the game is Frank Howard. He scored two of the three Dodger runs, and his double in the ninth made all the difference in the world. All right, I'm going to get an episode out of digital dice. If Gardner can do it now, because I got things later on this afternoon. So, I've got stuff to do tomorrow, too. So, Monday is our next scheduled stream opening day from the big old ballpark in the Bronx. It's the Twins and the Yankees, 1988. Starts Monday right here on Retro Sports Network. Have a good weekend, everybody.